Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed, and in this particular VD tutorial, I will show you how to load only the files those got modified today using SSIS. So the agenda of today's VD tutorial is that how we can load the file those got modified today. So recently I got a question from one of my subscriber Yasin, and he asked that uh, if you can make a video like you load only the files those got modified today, for example. So I thought to make a video on this one. So let's jump to the demo. In my D files location, I got three CSV files: test data underscore one, test data underscore two, and test data underscore three. So if you look at the first file, test data underscore one, so it was modified in May 2017. Although the test data underscore two, this file got modified today, and the third file, test data underscore three, this file also got modified today. So when the SSIS package will run, test data underscore two and test data underscore three file, these two files should be loaded. Okay, and let me show you that today is the twenty uh, fifth April. Yeah, so you can see that today is twenty fifth April. So that's why the last two files should be loaded. So let's see how we can do this using SSIS. All right. So let me open the SSIS package. So this is my blank SSIS package where I will be writing the code today so that it can. Load only the file those got modified today. First of all, let me just drag and drop the execute SQL task into the control flow window, and here I will create the table in which I will be loading the data. Let me rename this particular task as create table, and let me just configure this particular task. So in the connection, I will make a connection to the work database. Click OK, and now under SQL statement. i will provide this particular statement so what we are doing here that if the test table will exist then it will drop the table and then it will recreate the table okay so let me just execute this one let me copy this particular query from here and let me paste it here click okay okay and now let me just drag and drop the for each loop container into the control flow window because for each loop container can be used to loop through multiple files and before moving further Let me just create an SSIS variable here, and I will call the variable as file path, so that during the iteration of the files, a particular file, the current file path, will be assigned to this particular SSIS variable file path. So the data type will be string, and I need to provide the one of the path, valid path here. So let me just pro provide any path, maybe test date underscore one here. So let me just paste the value here. Another variable I will create is Which will tell us if the file is modified today. So maybe I can call it like is file modified today. Okay. So the data type will be string here. So if the file will be modified, so there will be only two possible values, either n or y. So if a file is modified today, then the value will be y. Otherwise, the value will be n. So let me close this one. And now let me just configure the for each loop container here. I need to click on collection, and from the enumerator, I need to select the for each file enumerator because I'm just going to look through all the files. And under folder, I can browse the D files location where my files are situated. Click OK. Now under file types, because the file type is CSV, so I will type star dot CSV here so that it can just look through all the CSV files. Although at the moment there are only just CSV files in this folder. Now I need to go to variable mappings, and I need to select the file path variable from here, so that during iteration of the files, the current file value will be assigned to the file path SSIS variable. So I can click on OK. So I have configured the for each loop container. Now I need to use the script task here, so that we can know if the file is modified today or if the file is not modified today. So I can just drag and drop the script task into the for each loop container, and maybe I can just call the, this one as Check if a file modified today. Okay, and then I can right-click on it and click on Edit. I need to click on the read-only variables, and I will select the file path because I will be using the file path inside the script task. And under read-write variables, I will select the is file modified today because I will modify the value of the is file path today. Either I will set the value as y or I will set the value as n. Now I can click on OK. And now maybe I can copy this particular name from here because I will be using this name inside the script task, and I can click on the edit script. This will open the script editor for me in the C sharp language. So the script editor has been opened up, and I can paste the variable name here is file path today, and another variable is file path. Now let me declare two variables here is file modified today and file path, and the data type of both will be string. So I can write is string is file path today, and I will set the initial value as n. And now let me declare another variable is string file path equal to 
and its value will be assigned from the SSIS variable DTS dot variables I can paste the value here dot value dot to string okay so this is how I will declare two variables now I will get the last modified date from the file path and for that I have written a single line of code here and I will just paste it here so what we are doing here we are getting the last write time from the file path and we are assigning it to a local variable last modified okay and now let me just copy two more lines of code I can copy from here and I can paste it here so what we are doing here that in this particular line we are declaring it today date time variable and we are assigning the current date value into this particular variable it will also contain the date plus time as well and now we have declared another str today string variable and we are just getting the current date value into this particular variable so we are just removing the time we are just getting the date now same thing we need to do for the last modified date time variable as well because in str today it will get the today's date and now we need to get the str last modified so that it can have the last modified date value for the file so here I need to copy the last modified to this one now we got two variables here str today and str last modified so str today will get the current date and str last modified will get the last modified date of the file now we can simply compare both the variables that if str today equal to str last modified so if this is the case it means that the current file that is selected this is the last modified time okay so if this will be the case then what we will do we will assign the is file modified to y okay so we know that the file was modified today so this is the condition and if today's date won't be equal to the str last modified of the file date then we won't assign any other value because we have already assigned a n value to it okay now in the end what we need to do we need to assign the SSIS variable that we have this one is file modified today with the value from the local variable and the local variable is is file modified today okay so this is the code and I will share this code with you so that in case if you want to use it in your environment then you can use it so this is a complete code so at the end of this particular script task a value y or n will be assigned to the is file modified today so let me copy this value from here and now I can exit this particular code click ok now we will use a data flow task and before the data flow task we, can, we will check that either we need to load the file or we should not load the file now what we will do we will click on this particular precedence constraints and inside the constraints option we will select expression and constraints and then you will click on these three dots and we will check that if is file modified today equal to y only then we will load the file okay otherwise we won't load the file so I can click ok now in the data flow task we will actually load the file load the today's file and we can write the code to load the file so because it's a csv file so we will be using the flat file source here I can configure the flat file source it will create a new flat file connection manager I will call the connection manager as flat file and then I can browse the file the file type is CSV I will select any file from here click open if you click on preview so data seems good here you can click on ok ok now we want to write the data into a SQL destination so we will be using the OLEDB destination here and I can connect the flat file source with the OLEDB destination our stable name is test so I will select test table from here and if you click on mapping so you will see that all the columns have been mapped except the last column which is the file path I created this column file path so that I know that whatever file is being loaded that particular file path should be loaded into this particular column okay so that I know that okay the file first file got loaded or the second file got loaded so we can easily identify either the first file got skipped or it got loaded okay so what I will do I will create a new column file path and the value of the file path will be get from the file path SSIS variable so I will be using a drive column transformation here and I can connect the flat file source with the drive column transformation and then under the variable and parameters I will just drag and drop the file path into the expression so that it will get the current file path and we will create a new column and the column name will be file path okay if you check the data type so right now the data type is unicode string 23 uh, but in the sql server table the data type is varchar 50 okay so we will convert this value 
from unicode to the worker so how we will do that you can just type cast it dt underscore str comma 50 of length and 1252 code page so this will convert it to a string 50 now i can click on ok and now i can connect back the drive column with the oledb destination and under the mappings now i can just map the new column file path with the file path destination column and now i can click ok so our package is almost done now what we need to do we need to just make the flat file connection manager is dynamic so i can go to the properties of it and go to the expressions click on these three dots select the connection string property from here and then i need to assign the value into the connection string from the file path ssis variable because the file path value will change for each iteration of the for each loop container so i can click on evaluate expression so this is the default value but this will change for file 2 and file 3 as well so i can click ok ok so now my ssis package is done and uh, so if you look at the file so there are three files here but the last modified date of these two files test data underscore two and test data underscore three is of today's date so only these two files will be loaded and the first file won't be loaded okay now let me go back to the ssms and let me show you if it contains any data or not so at the moment this table doesn't contains any data so let me show you the data yeah so the table is empty and even the table will be recreated whenever i will execute the ssis package so let me just execute the ssis package and it should load the data from two files so the package ran fine and if i go back to the ssms and if i try to rerun the select query again so now you can see that it got 60 records and the test data underscore 2 file got loaded and then the test data underscore 3 file got loaded as well so just two files got loaded and the first file did not got loaded because the last modified time of the first file was 30th may 2017 so i think this is how we can load the current dates modified files into the sql server table using ssis thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much